Hello, I'm Radiant Prime. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about um, uh, these notes um, on how to catch a macro. How to catch a macro. For some reason, people keep getting in contact with me and asking about uh, is this person using a macro? Or, you know, I was watching someone's stream and I think I caught them macroing. Uh, are they macroing? Can you tell everyone that they're macroing? I mean, I could do that, I suppose, but. Um, I feel like even when it's super obvious that someone is macroing on Twitch or whatever, um, they will have loyal fans who will come out and support them no matter what, and I can't be asked with the, with the argument to be honest, you know? Uh, if you're a fan of someone and you don't want to believe they're macroing, you won't. So I'm going to give you the tools to catch macros yourself and to stop asking me questions about it. Uh, let's carry on with that. Okay, so I've opened up the game. We're flying around a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna tell you very briefly what a macro is. So a macro is a little program that you run that uh, automates some kind of repetitive action. That's pretty much the definition of a macro. So in this case of Star Wars Squadrons, those repetitive actions are mostly around drifting, dead drifting, boost skipping, boost gasping, shield skipping, those kinds of uh, nonsense terms, right? Where you have to hit loads of buttons in a very short period of time, like that, um, uh, to get the result you want. So let's, yeah. So if you want to catch a macro, you are looking for repetitive kind of actions occurring on a regular basis with a, a regular kind of timing between them that would just be too much for a human to do, like. You know, maybe, maybe if you watch me, like, uh, if I do a boost gasp, right? If you were to time, like, all the differences between those, you probably see that they're very similar, but not the same. Yeah? So I'm doing a whole bunch of things when I do that boost gasp. I'm putting power away from my engines, I'm putting it over to shields, I'm boosting, drifting. And then I'm putting power back over to weapons and then engines. Yeah. And one of the giveaways, I guess, that I'm not macroing is that I can change all the timings between that manually. Yeah. It's never the same unless I want it to be. And even then, I'm doing it at different frequencies you know, for different reasons. And occasionally, I can get it wrong, yeah? Or I can shift from boost skipping to boost gasping, yeah? So people who macro, they find ways to um, do these things automatically, and with that, they tend to lose flexibility. So one of the most common macroing patterns that we're seeing at the moment is this one. You see how my engines and then weapons are constantly having power switched to them. That's because if I were macroing, all I have to do is shift my power away and then know that my macro script, which is running constantly in a loop in this case, is going to shift my power back over to engines. So say I wanted to dead drift, I just go, and then my script will continue to push stuff back to my engines and weapons. And that means that I only have to worry about one part of the dead drift. It reduces the complexity upon me um, and makes the game easier to play in effect. None of the tournament organizations have done anything about it or shown any willing to do anything about it. And I suspect that's going to be the case. It's not really anything on the tournament organizers. Like, it's so hard to police. Um, and really, the community needs to learn to police itself a little better on this stuff uh, if it's going to at all. Um, and ultimately, uh, those players know who they are. They know who they are. They're using these macros. And all they're actually doing is they're robbing themselves of getting to the real skill ceiling of the game because this stuff isn't that hard to do. Um, I mean, it's not easy. It takes time. It takes practice. 
you know? And even when you've done it for a long time and you've practiced and you can do it whilst you're talking on fucking video, you're gonna crash and you're gonna do shit that's wrong. And that's just part of it. That's just part of learning and getting to the skill ceiling, which ultimately is the most exciting thing about squadrons. So uh, video over, look for repetitive actions, especially around dead drifting. Uh, look for people who seem to have some kind of weird tick. Look at the lights at the bottom of power management. Those lights going off mean that someone is hitting a button. If they're hitting them, impossibly quick almost, so they're going at the same time as well, that's a good pattern for that to, to be looking for. You know, people routinely don't hit them that fast because you don't need to. So like, if I want to boost gas, I don't actually need to shift my power back to engines immediately. But if I'm writing a macro, I probably would. Probably. Not necessarily. But I probably would because it means that I am uh, freeing my input up, you know? If I wait a bit, then my macro might have to wait for the result of that action to kind of stop running and then to let me do more keyboard inputs. Depends how well you write your macro uh, and if you understand multi-threaded programming. I'm not going to talk about that right now. Uh, let's just clear up some other stuff whilst we're on this topic as well. Uh, no, I will not write you a macro. Um, no, I will not share you any of the macro scripts I wrote. Uh, you can't have them. You can go and figure out how to write your own if you want. I mean, learning to program is a valuable life skill. Uh, until then, uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.